this man and his family. I mean it, I mean it, I mean it. And <clears throat> I love you guys. I'm going to tell you something. Um, I haven't seen you in four weeks. Where have y'all been? I mean, really, four weeks? It was, oh my goodness. That's, that's going to be my description. It was, oh my goodness. Um, but, you know, with that, I'm going to, I'm going to, my goodness. I have not been at a place where my struggles where loss in my family, where sickness in my family is met with such love, such caring. I got everything from text to casseroles. Oh yeah, people showed up with casseroles. I didn't know you could make a casserole out of so many different things. <laughs> but you can't, you guys are amazing. I mean, you guys are awesome. People sent us gift cards. People brought us groceries. People brought us medicine. People brought us casseroles. Did I say casseroles? People brought, I mean, and it's like out of the woodwork, people showed up and cared for me and my family. You guys don't understand what that means. How it touched me, how it touched my family. I, I love you. I love you all. I love you. I love you. I love you. Um, I, I also just love the opportunity uh, to be here to speak. I love that um, I'm getting to live out parts of my dreams. And Pastor Doug uh, is, is so gracious to allow me to be up here. Um, my voice is a little rattly. <laughs> Did you get it? Because the name of the song was Rattle. My voice is a little rattly. But I'm going to say this to that also. I love, here's another thing I love about Legacy Church. Worship is not the appetizer. Y'all hear me? Worship is not the appetizer. Worship is the main event. Worship is what we are created to do. Worship is what we are made for. And even though I'm going to bring a word, even though I'm going to speak, I will sing until there is no voice left, till there is nothing left in me. Because that's what we're created for. And we have a place where that is fostered, where that is poured into, where that is, is, is asked for. And I, I'm saying all this to say, my goodness, if, if you've got something going on, you're in the right place. If you've got something in your life that feels kind of crazy, you're in the right place. If you're looking for, for destiny this close, you're in the right place. If you're looking for deliverance, you're in the right place. If you're looking for healing, you're in the right place. If you're looking for freedom, you're in the right place. If you've been asking God, if you've been praying, I heard a preacher say this way, the more you pray, the more coincidences happen. I was just praying, I was asking God, I need something new in my life, and the next thing you know, my tire fell off my car, but I met the person that poured into me and changed the rest of my days. What a coincidence. My car broke down right there, right there, and he was so nice. Just saying, the more you pray, the more coincidences happen. There is, I have more notes I wish I could show y'all. And for those of you that know the way um, I normally speak, I'm a very note minimalist individual. Um, I prepare and prepare and prepare and prepare. And I preach to myself and I preach to myself and I preach to myself and I preach to myself. And about Friday or Saturday, I jot down, okay, don't forget this scripture. Don't forget that scripture. Don't forget this scripture. And I'm done. Because I've done this thing 65 times before the day that I get up. And uh, so this one, because we are, we are coming out of a book, it's like, man, there's so much. i got to get so much in here. There's so much information. There's so many points to hit. And I'm scrolling going, oh, what do I do with all of these notes? It's unbelievable. Today, we're going to wind the clock. 
What does that mean? I don't know. Today we're going to wind the clock. I do know. I'm messing with you. First, first though, Legacy Church, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Put your hands like this. You at home, do it too. Come on, I know you in your PJs. That ain't going to hurt nothing. I have to move my blanket. My feet are cold. Put your hands like this. Lean to this side like this. Oh, yeah. Now lean to this side like this. Oh, yeah. Now turn like this. Oh, yeah. Now turn like this. Oh, doesn't that feel good? All right, you may be seated. It would have looked strange if I did that by myself. So I just wanted all the, you know, after rattle, all that jumping and all that, it's like, plus you need that. You need your blood moving because we are going to move this morning. Amen? Amen? Why do you wind a clock? My wife looked this up for me because I was like, I remember one clock way back when I was about this big. My grandmother had one and it had a little, <laughs> and you, you, had to, you had to wind it. But nowadays, you don't, like, you don't find them. You don't find clocks that, that you wind. And she gave me some more information. She's like, you're supposed to wind a clock every eight days or it'll stop. But most people wind it every seven days. Isn't that just like God to make, like whoever invented this windy clock thing, that you have to reset every seven days? Here we are, it's Sunday. Hopefully y'all reset last Sunday and reset the Sunday before that and reset the Sunday before that. Now I'm going to dig even deeper than that. Hopefully you're going to reset tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. We wind the clock to keep it working. Time is measured in minutes, but our life is measured in moments. Okay, this is going to be, this is going to be a big part of what we're talking about this, this morning. Time is measured in minutes. Minutes don't stop. They just keep going. Time is a, is a constant. But our life is measured in moments. Wind the clock is going to help us steward time in two ways. It's going to make the most out of every minute and also make the most out of every moment. Um, those of you that have been through freedom, y'all have heard several of my stories, and I'm not going to get into a whole lot of it, but I can tell you from being a drug addict to being completely delivered was a moment in time that changed my life. And when I've told the story, when I've shared that part of my testimony, something happened when God walked into my room and it's almost like time stopped. I can't tell you how long I was in the presence of God. I have no idea. And I know that sounds strange, but it's, I can't tell, it could have been, it could have been a second, but it felt like a day. It could have been a day, but it felt like a second. All I know is from this point in time to that point in time, this Jason was dead and gone, and this Jason was alive and well and completely delivered. That moment in my life changed the rest of my destiny. That moment in time. Wind the Clock is going to talk about celebrating your moments. Do you mark those occasions in your life? I, I'm, not, I'm not good. I wish I was. I wish I could tell you the, the date I got saved. Pastor Doug, what date did you get saved? Do you remember? What date did you meet your wife? March 22nd, 1988. Okay. I've heard Pastor Doug several times. He's got dates like, I remember it was a Tuesday. Uh, he doesn't sound that country. He's from Colorado. I remember it was Tuesday. Oh, wait. No, he's Texas now. He is Texas. I remember it was a Tuesday, 4 o'clock, August 22nd, 1900, and whatever it was. And yeah, 88. And I can't remember dates like that. It's like I can't tell you. I got a couple, and I cheated. I tattooed them on myself. I have my anniversary. It's like hidden right here. Oh, oh, yeah. Ah, happy anniversary, babe. So, so good. Of course I remembered. Oh, it's not today. Um, 
I can't remember dates very well. I don't, it's like I wish I could. I wish I knew the day that I got saved. I wish I knew the day I was delivered. I wish I knew the day I decided to put everything I am into following Christ. I wish I knew, uh, well, I do, I remember the day when uh, I was ready to get married. Uh, and I actually know the day that I first met my wife, but that's only because uh, my, my parents were getting married and uh, I met her on that day, so it's kind of like cheating. I know, I know when it is. Um, but if you don't remember the date of those things, listen to this. Is there evidence that the thing has happened? I don't remember the day I got saved, but there's evidence that it happened. I don't remember the day I got delivered, but there's evidence that it happened. So I'm not co so concerned about the date. I'm looking at the evidence of a moment in time that changed my life. You guys with me? The ancient Greeks had two words for time. They used chronos and they, they used kairos. And uh, they're the same. They're, they're two different sides of the same coin. They're as different as heads and tails. Chronos is clock time where we get our word uh, chronology um, from chronos. And chronos is sequential from past, present to future. That's like, it, it's it, it's time. Kairos, kairos is the moment. Kairos is, is the God-designed moment in your life. Kairos makes the most of every opportunity. It's a sixth sense that perceives the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Kairos doesn't keep time as much as it makes time. You got that? That's, uh, I had a boss at one point and uh, it was very, it, it, a very great life lesson, but it was very hard to ignore that. Um, <laughs> it was very, it was very hard to come up. He would ask you, hey, did you complete your thing? Did you complete this on time? Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't have time. And you could have all kind of, I did this and I did that and I did this. I wasn't messing around. I didn't have time. And he said, no, you didn't make time. Ouch. How about, let's just try something different. I did this and this and this. I understand that, but I asked for this. So you didn't make time. It became one of the biggest deterrents from not completing my task because I hated to say I didn't make time. I didn't make time. Kairos is about making time. Uh, the poet Elizabeth Barrett Browning said it this way. She said, earth's crammed with heaven. And every common bush a fire with God. But only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit around it and pluck blackberries. Wow. Every bush is an opportunity to take your shoes off and meet God face to face. But we have to be led in that Cairo spirit. We have to be pulled in that Kairos moment where we're recognizing this is a moment in time that I'm being directed by the Holy Spirit to see something above and beyond what is in the natural. And get this, the whole point of this whole series is to change your life and allow you to walk into your destiny one minute at a time, one moment at a time. That from this second to this second, I am moving closer to the call that God has on my life. I want this moment to change the trajectory of my life. From this moment forward, I'm moving into the God-sized dream that he's put inside of me. Yeah, y'all with me? Hey, y'all are, uh, did y'all like run all out of attitude and rattle? I'm checking. Did we wear you out? Woo! Everybody there? All right, that's it. I'm going to start sprinkling. All right, most people have water. I really, I, you know, um, I've been out for four weeks. Cut me some slack. I know people that operate this way, and I'm working on it. Lombardi time states that if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. 
I'm working on it. I really am. I'm trying. I'm normally like, if I get there, I made it. Like, that's been most of my... Now, we had six children, and they were all small, and it's like, you got to be at church. And it's like, Nate, as a baby shed every ounce of clothing and would hide in dangerous places. We would find him on top of like a shelf, completely nude, trying to take out a light bulb, like leaning on this. Nate! The girls, we took one, Caroline, to school one time in a hurry, trying to get, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. We pull up at the school. Caroline doesn't have any shoes on. She wore two water shoes and they were both left feet. I'm like, honey, you sent our baby to school that way. I was late and the girls were late and I can't believe she left without her shoes on. And so she walked like this the whole day. But if I prepare ahead of time, I can be anywhere 15 minutes early. Yeah? Y'all with me? Nobody wants to go, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Pastor Doug actually has a, has a saying, and I can't ever remember it, because it's if you're late, you're early. If you're early, you're late. And when you get there, you got there. So just be happy. Um, it goes something like that. Uh, you know, loosely paraphrased. Um, but I would ask him for his because it's much better than the one I just said. Um, Kronos is all about making good time. Kairos is about enjoying the journey. Right? I want to live my dream. I want to live the ultimate destiny that God has for me. And not, not like, oh man, you got close, 98% of you. No, I want 100% of the destiny. When God wrote a book about my life before he was ever born, I want to fulfill every chapter that he put in the book with as little white out as possible. Y'all yep. yep. following me? But I want to enjoy getting there. I want to enjoy the time. It's a learning experience. Some things are tough. Some things are hard. Some things are difficult. Some things rattle my brain. Some things make me tell people, I'm not sure if God even likes me today. He has to love me, but I'm not sure if he likes me today. And I'm just saying that for effect. Everybody should know that God likes you all the time. He loves you all the time. It's like, I knew it. God didn't like me. No, it was a joke. But I want to fulfill 100% of the destiny that God has for me. This is, this is the second book um, that we've gone through as a body um, by, uh, by this author. And the first one was, was Chase the Lion. And I'm going to tell you something uh, right now. Chase the Lion changed my life. Chase the Lion healed something on the inside of me that was broken. It's just a book, bro. Calm down. I was in a place where this up here, I didn't even feel like I deserved to be here. And so there was no reason to pursue anything else because I shouldn't be in this place in the first place. I just got lucky. Woo, kind of slid in. Man, I'm glad the worship team wasn't that good. They needed somebody. No, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. God was doing something. God was setting me up. I am just convinced. God likes to set us up. He likes to go, oh, you think coincidence. Watch this. No, God, watch me confirm, watch me affirm, watch me confirm, watch me affirm, watch me move in your life, watch me change things. You're going to keep saying yes, I'm going to keep moving. Your heart is going to be continually to do what I want to do. Watch me keep changing things in your life that's going to blow your mind. And every time I blow your mind, you're going to step into a new place where I've got you, I've put you, and you're going to be bigger and better and more like the person that I wrote down at the very beginning. You're going to change the world because that's what I put you 
you here for. Not as an arrogant, I'm here to change the world, but God gave me hands and feet to move and spread his message to tell about him because I was a broken, beat up individual and I'm not anymore. Because in a moment, my, my, my existence went from death to life. In a moment. And I'll get to enjoy the journey. Woo! In 1905, Albert Einstein did an experiment. He did a thought experiment. I don't even know how you get there. I'm just going to go ahead and, like, these are people that brain work on such a different level. It's like, I'm going to do an experiment. I'm not going to touch anything. It's just a thinking experiment. That way, ow. But he did a thought experiment that would ultimately win him the Nobel Prize. He said, imagine two twins. One of them gets on a spacecraft, traveling four-fifths the speed of light, and returns to Earth ten years later. When the twins are reunited, they will be different ages. The Earth-bound twin will be ten years older, while the interstellar twin will only be six years older. Listen to this. The faster we travel, the slower time moves. The faster we travel, the slower time moves. So why do you keep saying that? There's speed limits. I will get a ticket and I'm blaming you. Because they said in church that the faster we travel, I'm trying to slow down. I'm not going to make my 15 minutes early deadline. So I'm trying to stop time by doing 136 on the highway. No. I want you to relate this spiritually. The faster we travel, the slower time moves. Everyone who has a destiny, raise your hand. Everybody? Is that every hand? We good? We got all of them? Everyone who has a destiny... Y'all can look around. It's everybody. It's you guys at home. The faster we travel, the slower time moves. Now, did I set an age limit? Did I say, okay, everybody who has a destiny that's under the age of 35. Everybody who has a destiny that's under the age of, oh, let's bump it up a little. Let's say uh, 65. Everybody who has a destiny, the faster you move, towards the call of God on your life, the slower time moves, and there is no limit of time to accomplish the thing that God has for you. In other words, it is never too late to walk in the call that God has on your life. It is never too late to begin to live your dream. It is never too late. 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 It is never too late, it is never too late to move into your destiny. Oh, but you don't understand. You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm too old. You know, this week, I, um, me, and the, me, me and the kids play a card game, and it has a whole bunch of texts and a whole bunch of things. And uh, my kids brought me some cheaters, some of those little... Those little glasses. And of course they bring the ones that when I put them on, I look like Santa Claus. <laughs> Dad, you look like Santa Claus. Thank you. It's awesome. I'm 41 years old and I need these things to be able to see this thing in front of me. They're, Are you going to wear them when you preach? Heck no. Do I want everybody knowing I look like Santa Claus? Absolutely not. I'm not going to wear them until... until I, I, this thing's like blown up. There's four words on each screen. I just keep scrolling. No, uh, no, it's not that bad. But age, age is a mindset. If I tell myself over and over that I'm too old to do anything, you know what? I'm too old to do anything. If I tell myself I can't go play basketball with my boys because I'm ah, too old. Now, I'm telling you, I'm going to go out there with more braces, knee braces, back braces, been gay, icy hot and stuff than anybody's ever seen. But I will go out there and play basketball. <laughs> Who's that? It's the mummy. <laughs> Pass me the rock, boys. <laughs> exactly. And take off those grave clothes. If I continue to say with my mouth, oh, why? Because the power of life and death lies in the tongue. 
I'm too old. No, I ain't. I'm not too old. My mind thinks I'm in my 20s still. My body thinks I'm somewhere in my 60s. But my spirit says, bro, I don't care what it is. We can do it. Sometimes my body disagrees with my spirit. Dude, don't jump over. Ah! My bad. I thought I could. But I don't think I'm too old for anything. I don't think I'm too old for anything. There's a word for that. It's called uh, neoteny. It's a zoological term that refers to the retention of youthful qualities into adulthood. One of the best examples in all of the Bible is Caleb. Everybody remember Caleb? Yeah. Moses sends him in. He's like, bro, we got this. Ten other knuckleheads are like, oh, we're grasshoppers, blah, 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 there's giants. And so the majority snuffs out the minority. They spent 40 days spying out the land. And for 40 days, they paid 40 years in the desert. How important is time to God? One day equaled one year from spying out what I've got for you. I've already told you. This is what I got for you. All you have to do is walk in and confirm the words that I've already said. Caleb and Joshua came out. We got this. The other 10 guys said, ah, I don't know. For 40 days, they spent 40 years in the desert. I don't want to spend 40 years in any desert. Please, God, no. If he says, I got this, I got this. How are you going to do it? Don't know, but he does. I have no idea, but he does. And if he knows and my heart says yes, I'll get there. Y'all with me? When Caleb set out uh, after the promised land, after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness... He felt 40 all over again. When he finally made it back in, Caleb said, I'm as strong today as I was 40 years ago. And I bet he walked around like that. Caleb, like, you ever seen kind of like the grizzled old men that were like, they've been working drilling rigs and that kind of, they got like hands like dog paws. It's like they just rough and work and everything else. And they, they walk like that. Man, you say what you I may be 40, I may be 50, I may be 60. I ain't worried about it. I'm as strong today as I was when I was 20. You got to add 20, 40, whatever. I'm as strong today, but that's a mentality. That's a vocalization. That's a declaration that today, this day, I'm as strong as I was 20 years ago. I have the same energy. Come on, people that are tired all the time. I have the same resilience. I have the same tenacious ability within me to chase down everything God lays before me. I'm as good today as I was 20 years ago. I'm ready. Put 225 on the bench. Shoot. Hit. I could rep it out still. I didn't make that number up. I picked one that I know I could do just in case somebody calls me out. Uh, recently, there were some ancient writings uh, that have been discovered uh, that also give some added perspective to Caleb. Uh, this is what it said about Caleb. It said, Caleb counted to infinity uh, twice. Caleb wore a beard, but underneath wasn't a chin. It was just another fist. <laughs> Caleb didn't use a sundial. He simply decided what time it was. The dinosaurs looked at Caleb the wrong way, and well, we know what happened to them. Caleb could speak Braille, and once a cobra bit Caleb, and after five days of excruciating pain, the cobra died. Yes, Caleb was the original Chuck Norris. In other words... As long as you're going after your God-sized dream with God-given passion, you're never past your prime. Vision makes time fly, but it slows down the aging process. I'm going to say that again. Vision 
because you're looking so far into the future. I have a vision for the things I want to do, for the things I, I want to accomplish, for who I want to be, for who I want my family to be, for how I want my boys to grow up, for how I want my girls to grow up. I have a vision that is future-minded, but it slows down my aging process. I got stuff to do. I got things I need to do, and it starts today. It starts now. It starts this moment. Some of you right now, during, during this whole uh, 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 teaching, there's been a seed planted that says, from this moment, I have to change some things in my life. I've got things I need to do. I've got things I need to accomplish. I know, I know that God has been calling me here or calling me there or telling me this or telling me that. I have got to change this moment. And let me tell you, because uh, I was supposed to teach like six, two, four weeks ago or three weeks ago, and then I was supposed to teach another one like a couple weeks after that, and you know, circumstances, I wasn't here, I wasn't here, and it's just like God to stick me with this one because he knows I need to work on this one the most. Jason, you need to manage your time better. Oh, can we go back to the frog one? Good with that, I'll eat a frog. I'll do it in front of everyone. Just his legs. Now, actually, eat the frog is one of those that's a challenge, too, because I always, I always want to put the hard stuff at the end. That way I have a decent excuse. I, ah, I didn't get there. Whew, I did all the easy stuff. I did all the other stuff. But, oh, man, I'll just do it tomorrow. It's a procrastination tip if anybody wants to learn how to procrastinate. Put all the hard stuff at the end. But that's not what we need to do. We need to take care of the tough stuff first. That way the rest of the day is a coast. That way the rest of the day we're flying. We have a sense of accomplishment. We have a sense of I've done something. I've achieved something. I've made progress. I'm moving forward. I have a destiny. I have a calling. I have a dream. I have a God-sized dream. I have something that's bigger than me. And it's going to take this minute and this minute and this minute and this minute and this minute to get there. But I'm going to apply myself. And in that, I'm not going to be beat up by the process I'm gonna enjoy the journey it's just like it's just like you guys just like I was saying at the beginning I'm so happy like I got to see my people I got to see all my friends I got to see people I haven't seen in a month some of you I didn't even know I liked you that much <laughs> I missed you oh wow I didn't know I liked them that much I'm just kidding pastor Doug <laughs> it's never too late to be what you might have been. Never too late to be what you might have been. Aging is a mindset. It's not only mind over matter, but it's mindfulness over matter. Mindfulness is paying attention to our present, and it's one way that we wind the clock. It's an accurate awareness of what we're thinking and what we're feeling. Awareness is what the Spirit of God is doing in us and around us. Mindfulness is the mind of Christ. It's living in sync with God's Spirit. Not in a sync, but in sync. And in sync together with Him, not the boy band. It's keeping one eye on eternity and the other eye, listen, one eye on eternity and the other eye on opportunity. God, what opportunity? I'm big on the word opportunity. It's like, that's one of my favorite words. If I have buzzwords, like opportunity is one of my buzzwords, along with come on and some other ones. But I love opportunity. You have a choice. We all are given a choice. Choice is wrapped in opportunity. You have an opportunity to walk further, walk closer, walk deeper into your destiny, or you have an opportunity to walk further away from the call of God on your life. You get to choose. We get to choose which opportunity we take. It could be an opportunity for freedom. It could be an opportunity for bondage. I'm going to tell you this, this much. Um, if there's a God-sized dream in your heart, if there's a call of God on your life, everybody raise their hand, right? Everybody's got a destiny? Yes? 
If it is there, the devil is going to put every opportunity in front of you to not achieve that. That's it. Yep. If you want to know if you're heading in the right direction, how much opposition do you have to getting from point A to point B? If you want to know if you're moving right, God, is this where I'm going? Man, everything's so difficult. Everything's so hard. You mean I got to get places 15 minutes early? I got to be mindful of my time and my surroundings and how I'm managing stuff. But you're calling me here, and that means I need to be more organized. I need to be more mindful. I need to, be, I need to pay attention more. I need to not let age dictate what I'm going to do. Oh, man. Okay, I feel the resistance. This is, this is where I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to lean into that. I'm going to push through that. Why? Because something's got to break. And because God is inside of me, it's not going to be me. Y'all like comic books? Huh? Marvel movies? Those kind of things? Yeah? Everybody, Wolverine fans? Any Wolverine fans? I always loved Wolverine. There's only three of you. Wolverine had an adamantium skeleton. It's like they coated his bones with, with this, this metal, this unbreakable metal. That's the way I feel like Jesus operates inside of me. That's the, it's like that's the picture I get. If something's going to break, it's not going to be me because he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. I'll hit a rock, I'll hit a hard place, I'll hit a block, I'll hit a tree. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm moving forward, and the thing in front of me is going to have to break because I'm following God to my destiny that's, that's that way. Yeah, y'all aren't very excited. It's like just, it's too much. It's too much information. If the battle is won and lost in our mind, then predecisions are how we wage war. And I'm going to wrap it up. If the battle is won or lost in the mind, then pre-decisions are how we wage war. It's making the decisions before we make the decisions. And, and the book gets, gets very uh, detailed here, but I'm going to break it down like this. If you don't have boundaries in your life, if you don't set those boundaries early, you're going to find yourself in a place that you never should have been. You're going to find yourself on the other side of things. Oh, my goodness, how did I get here? Joseph is the example uh, that's used. Joseph made a decision beforehand, not when Potiphar's wife was all over him, not in the heat of the moment, not when she was like, hey, kid, what are you doing? Where are you going? Now, he made a decision before that. I'm not going to sleep with any woman that's not my wife. He, he decided that ahead of time, so when temptation presented itself, he removed himself from the problem. What pre-decisions do we need to make? What boundaries do we need to set in our life to help us manage our time, to help us be mindful? You know what? I may be 41. I can act like I'm 31. I'm not going to tell anybody I'm 31. They know better. Somebody, <laughs> nah, skip it. Uh, <laughs> Somebody told me they thought I was 33 the other night. And I was like, yes, but they had been drinking. And so you kind of got to weigh it, the good and the bad. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'm just like, heck yeah, 33, shoot. God is moving in this body. God is changing things in individuals. I'm telling you first and foremost, God is challenging me in this book, in this series, as much as he challenged me in the last series, as much as he challenged me in the one before, as much as he challenged me in the one before, and it's not because he doesn't like me. It's because he has something for me that I cannot do on my own. He has something for me that I cannot do on my own. And so he's leading me down a path where he can help me do it. And it's going to be the most fulfilling, the most gratifying, the most amazing journey getting there. And I'm going to enjoy the moments. I'm going to celebrate the moments of victory. I feel like I got more work to do Doing this one chapter, I've got so many things 
in my life that I need to change. Not bad. Not like, oh, well, you, you know, I thought you stopped doing drugs all over again. No, no, no. But to be organized, to be productive, to manage my time. God, if, you, if there's a dream that you've set before me, I've got to prepare. I've got to prepare. I've got to make pre-decisions that are going to help me get to the destination that you've laid out ahead of me. I've got to enjoy the journey from pre-decision one to the last decision I ever make. I've got to be mindful of the time. I can't let age be an excuse. Abraham and Sarah didn't get to use age as an excuse. God, we too old. God said, no, you're going to be the father of many nations. Age is a number, but our mindset changes whether that number is enabling or disabling. I want to be mindful of the times that that God is calling me into. I want to have a purpose and a presence in Him that's going to allow me to navigate my life in such a way. Again, the goal is to live out my destiny 100%. 100%. If I have to eat some frogs, if I have to fly some kites, if I have to wind some clocks, if I have to do all of the things to get my life in order, it's not because I'm bad, it's so I can be better because God has something for me that's going to affect everyone around me. Do you understand that you're not on this earth for only you? That there are people in your lives that depend on you to walk out your destiny so that freedom can happen in their life. Deliverance can happen in their life. They can see that they have a destiny and move into the call of God. Yeah, it feels like a lot of pressure. I'm not worried about all those people. I'm worried about me moving forward. And God is going to deal with the people around me because a God in me as I continue to follow as I continue to draw close as I continue to move that God inside of me is going to shine outside of me and those people are going to be bathed in that light and there is no option but to change I want what you got how'd you do it I ate some frogs that's ridiculous those are gross let me explain I wound the clock let me explain I flew the kite let me explain I realize that there's a dream inside of me that I can't do on my my own and it means that God has to work through me so I have to get my life in order one minute at a time one moment at a time and I still trust me those of you that know me know me oh man you just gave me a whole list of things I got to do I got to do two things I'll do one thing two things but my goodness it's going to be worth it like that's the other part I'm so excited I'm so excited for what God has for us I'm so excited you know it's not only a destiny of an individual it's a destiny of a body I'll say again like I said at the beginning you're not here on accident No, I just picked. Believe me, I saw six signs driving down the road. I like the blue one. You're not here on accident. You're not there at home on accident watching me. It's not an accident. It's not coincidence. God is moving in your life because he wants to change those around you. We are here. Listen, we are here. Raise your hand. Say, I am here here. to change the world. world. Come Come on. If you just said, I'm going to say that, but it sounds too big, start changing your mentality. Start being mindful. God changed the world in a single moment. When he said in his finish, he changed the face of the planet forever. Get that. Get that here. When he said it is finished, it changed our planet forever. That I no longer had to be separated from God. That I could stand next to him. That I could lie beside him. That he could hold me close. That all the shame, all the guilt, all of the things that were wrapped inside of me. That were dirty and broken and beaten and worthless. That he could remove in a moment. Man. 
That's why they call it the good news. Isn't that good news? You don't have to be. Whatever you are today, you don't have to be. Well, it's going to take some time because I've been one of these for... No, no, no. You don't have to be. If you need anything this morning, I don't care what it is. If you need anything, you need healing. You need deliverance. You need uh, a job. You need a spouse. You need... uh, I don't care what it is. If you need anything in your life, I want you to stand up. Father God, right now, lift your hands up. Just lift them up. God, right now, right now, right now, God, just turn your spirit loose in this place. God, pour yourself out on this people, on the people at home that are standing with their hands raised. God, that in a moment, you can change our existence. God, in a moment, you could change our life. God, in a moment, destiny is achievable. God, I pray right now that you would just pour your spirit out on this place, on these people. God, pour your spirit out on these people. God, that you would bless them. God, that you would would remind them uh, of who you are, of what you've done. God, we give you thanks. I don't have to wait. I don't have to ask for praise reports. I know without a shadow of a doubt that God is moving in people's lives right now. That those tiny seeds that started at the beginning are beginning to grow. That those places inside that felt uncomfortable, you're beginning to see like it's like the light at the end of a tunnel. Oh, there is a way out of where I'm at. That the pit's not so deep anymore that you can step out of it. That where you've been, that where you've been hiding, God is uncovering you for a purpose. God, we thank you. God, we love you. We lift you up in this place. It's in your name that we pray. Everybody said? Amen, amen, amen. Pastor Doug. Come on, can we thank Jason this morning for bringing that word? Now, how much did you really get through, Jason? How much of that did you really get through? Uh, There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could tell. I could tell. It's like you're having to weave through some things y'all get the book we don't like do books obviously hardly ever but uh when you find something like that it's like i knew when i saw it i was like that's a word for our church and i'll take it uh without apology and so listen uh real fast um don't forget uh to see miss jen over there if you need a connection card If you're interested in growth track or life group leader training, all that's going to be happening today. Don't forget to go on a sugar fast so you can be messed up next Sunday after church with Kona Ice. Uh, Bring friends because uh, we're paying for it all. So it's like just just let's at least get the minimum, you know, from them. And so make them pay big time. Let's help them run out of ice. But uh, no. Um, have a phenomenal week. Let's win the day. The question from this whole time is, can you do it for a day? Don't worry about all week. Can you do it for a day? Can you maximize the moments today? Right? Can you do it for a day? Can you live for Jesus today? Amen? I love y'all. Have a phenomenal week. We will see you next Sunday. God bless you.